Hello there, football fans. Sharman here once again on this Friday for Fast Money Football. Albert Vatanian will join me shortly for some attack and defend. But for me, let's start with, it's kind of typical, I know, but, but the table or the tables across Europe right now. As we enter the stretch run, there's 10 games or so across Europe and the excitement at the very top end is off the charts right now. Now, we'll get to the, the bottom half and relegation fights in future shows, maybe as early as, as Monday, who knows, because there's some huge games this weekend. But at the top in England, for example, we know the big game this weekend is, is City against Liverpool. One point between them, it could be a tile decider. I don't know. Even Pat Guardiola said this Friday, it's just a massive three points. Um, but but doesn't really know what to expect because at times it's been tight. Other times it's been really open. So he's not given too much away there. But I'm going to focus a little bit more on the top four battle right now. Chelsea, of course, in third place, but but not safe in third place. Spurs are creeping up towards them. And given Chelsea's recent poor form, I mean, man, were they awful against Real Madrid, for example. You never know what might happen there. But Spurs, Arsenal, who, who lost against Crystal Palace on Monday, I just love this time of year. Um, West Ham, Manchester United, dare I say it. Wolves, all in contention still for fourth place with about 10 games left. So it's really another mini league now. How do you qualify for the Champions League and all the riches that come with that? How that can be a transformative season for some of these clubs. I mean, imagine Wolves or West Ham, for example, in the Champions League. That could change absolutely everything. So there are huge games on offer the next few weeks. In Italy, Milan, they lead Napoli by just a single point. Inter are four points back at first place with a game in hand as well. So the Serie A is really open as well. Spain, I know Real Madrid's bossing it by, by 12 points, but there's a three-way tie for second place with Barcelona. Yeah, Barcelona leading the way. If you haven't followed Spain this season, look at the last couple of months and see how Barcelona under Luis Enrique have turned everything around. They're going to be a real force next season. Germany, okay, Germany, there's, there's no drama for a change. And they're aware of that. Bayern Munich don't care, but there's no drama. Bayern will win the championship. But the good news is Alfonso Davies, our Alfonso Davies. You know, I feel like we, we own Alfonso Davies. He's ours. Um, he's back. We saw him this week in the Champions League. Yeah, that they weren't great far from it against Villarreal. But Fonzi looked fantastic in the second half, especially at the back, defending. At going, going forward, he wasn't at his best, perhaps. A little bit rusty, but at the back, he was just brilliant. But my, my point being with the top four leagues is that the stretch run will be really, really fun, I think, to watch. Great drama, great theater in most of those leagues. Not for everyone, though, of course. And I mentioned we'll get to the, the bottom half in a future show, but we should mention Frank Lampard. Lamps, who's been aboard for a couple of months now, is now the bookie's favorite to be the first manager sacked in England, either off-season, maybe in-season. Could you imagine? Could you imagine Frank leaving and big Sam Allardyce coming in to save the day at Everton? People are making fun of that possibility, but it is a possibility still. I don't think the odds are great in Lampard being fired this season, but listen, they're in a mire of, of, of hate right now. The fans are turning on this team, and Everton right now, given their schedule, could be the one to go down, along with probably Watford and certainly Norwich. But let's look into our crystal ball right now, shall we? And look forward to the summer, right? Now, don't forget, there's no World Cup this summer. There should be a World Cup this summer. There's always World Cups in the summer, right? But of course, Qatar... It's really hot in the summer, and FIFA didn't really contemplate that when they were taking the bribes to get Qatar the World Cup all those years ago now. Of course, that's in December and November. Canada's there. We're still really happy right now because Canada's there. But the bottom line is, this summer, there will be no international football apart from a few uh, uh, windows starting in June. So, so transfers, I think, will dictate our summer enjoyment and I say this, by the way, with all respect to MLS, there's always MLS. And of course, that's amazing. We'll, we'll follow that. But I'm talking about European football right now, the global game. So the transfers will dictate our enjoyment. And it's going to be a crazy summer, I think, for transfers. Leading the chase will be Kylian Mbappe. Now, the Real Madrid rumors are still there. PSG really won it, in fact. Mauricio Pochettino, who may not even be his manager next season, wherever he is, um, says that the best thing for PSG is for Mbappe to sign. 
the best thing for Mbappe is for him to sign a PSG. And he says he might even make him captain this weekend. Well, the rumors are PSG have a table, an offer on the table for $200 million for a two-year extension. So 100 mil per season for a couple of years to stick around. Uh, hmm. Now, he is apparently waiting for Real Madrid to match that offer. He really wants Real Madrid, let's be honest here. But still, it's going to be fascinating uh, where he ends up. But I still think he's probably moving. And as he moves, the dominoes will begin to fall behind him. It's all about strikers, it seems, this summer. The second prize is Borussia Dortmund's Erling Haaland, youngster, 16 goals and 18 Bundesliga games this season with Dortmund. And he is arguably the top three striker in world football, just prolific and still so, so young. Man City are the big favorites there. Don't be surprised as Man United get involved there. Barcelona with their new financials. Apparently, they can afford players once again now. As for, for Liverpool, well, Jurgen Klopp says no. No way he's coming. We can't afford him. He's pretty obvious about that, although it would be a great fit, I think. Um, but still, Erling Haaland will, will join somewhere after Mbappe joins somewhere. And then it's Harry Kane, the third prize. Not a bad third prize. He's been brilliant in recent weeks, back to his very best. I really see a fit there with Manchester United. They've got to make a splash with their new manager, which looks to be Eric Ten Hag. More rumors this morning. Sky Sports now are saying it's all but a done deal. Now, I know Ralph Rangnick said in his press conference before their match this weekend, um, you know, he can't say too much, but they have interviewed some of the best managers in the world. And if that includes Eric Ten Hag, then he is still one of the best managers in the world. So take that as you will. But I think there's a very good chance that you'll see Harry Kane going to Manchester United this summer. They've got to make a huge splash, maybe with Declan Rice, dare I say. It's time that that team turned it around. Other names making the news, Robert Lewandowski at Bayern Munich, out of contract. Um, he's getting older, but he's still one of the top, top number nines in world football. Could he be leaving Bayern Munich at the time they went a little bit younger up front? What about Inter Milan's Lutaro Martinez? Uh, he stayed there because Roman Lukaku left last year, but he's been brilliant again with 14 goals this season. Some big clubs want him, and depending on Inter Milan's books and their finances, he could be a target for a lot of big clubs. Of course, Cristiano Ronaldo, is it time to move on? Does Ten Hag, who loves playing and coaching young players, want to have Ronaldo there? Is it time for a move to MLS where he'll score? Well, he'll probably beat Austin Matthews, actually. Let's be honest. If he's played in the MLS, he'll probably score 50-odd goals. I, I jest a little bit there, but let's be honest. Uh, that would be a fun move to into Miami, who desperately needs something at this point. The lesser lights, you know, looking around the, the leagues, Rafinha at Leeds could be on his way out. Jared Bowen at West Ham as well. Really good players who might be looking for that big step up. And then, of course, there's the managers this summer. You know, the transfers of the players will make all the headlines. But there's some really interesting managerial moves. I mentioned Ten Hag already. I'm not sure the fans will accept him straight away because not a big, big name. But how did Van Hall and how did... Mourinho work out for you. I think Ten Hag might be a smart move if they change the whole club philosophy there. What about then Mauricio Pochettino, right? We all thought he was going to United, thought it was a done deal. But apparently releasing him from PSG won't be easy, it won't be cheap. Which is interesting because the other rumors are Zidane going to PSG, in which case they must fire Pochettino. It's getting very murky there. What about Max Allegri at Juventus? That hasn't quite worked out, has it? Maybe Poch to Juve could be a fit. And can Chelsea's new owners, whoever they are, convince Thomas Tuchel to stay? And then one more for you, just to cause a little bit of a, you know chaos. Pep Guardiola, he's contracted through next season, so that will begin to gather steam. Will he re-sign? Will he move somewhere else? Really interesting. It seems like he's pretty happy there right now, and why not? But one more year left. Lame duck manager. City need to move on at some point. So, uh, that's what I'm looking ahead into my crystal ball. With, with 10 games left in this season, if I remove the drama of the top four race and some of the title races, it's about this summer. It should be really, really exciting. I'm joined now by Albert Vitanian, who loves himself a good transfer. Uh, Albert, what are you thinking there? Are, are, you, are you more excited about potential transfers and managerial merry-go-round than the actual title races right now? Uh, yes and no. Talking from a Spurs fan's perspective, I'll put that hat on right now. Um, if Conte doesn't make top four with Spurs, he's going to be thrown into that mix. He might just be like, screw this. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> I could almost see 
Tuchel getting bounced from Chelsea, Spurs not making top four, Conte going to Chelsea, and Poch saying, you know what, I need to go back to Spurs and finish the job there. So Conte going back to Chelsea. Back to Chelsea under new owners. I like I can that. See that. Right? I mean, I think he would actually rather have the United job, but I mean, it, they need to make a decision soon. And uh, it's, he's not going to make his decision until the end of the season. It all comes down to, to transfer funds, doesn't it? I think with Conte. Right. If, if Dan Levy can convince Conte, if he's in top four, that they will spend money on what he wants and, and retain Harry Kane, then yeah, I can see him staying there. But when has Dan Levy ever done that, really? Never. Right. So, so yeah. I could see Conte jumping ship at some point. And if he does, he might be the, the number one target for a lot of clubs. And I'd love to see him go back to Chelsea with new ownership. You know, yeah. when, when Liverpool, when, when uh, John Henry bought Liverpool from the Hicks Gillette era, right? It was really nasty. The fans were at an all time low, been an awful ownership. They didn't know who this American was. And the first thing he did was he hired Kenny Dalgleish back because he is just revered and loved by those fans. Now, I'm not comparing Kenny Dalgleish to. Antonio Conte at Chelsea because Dalglish did it as a player, as a player manager, and as a manager, right? King Kenny is called Kenny for a reason. But the fans went, okay, this guy, this new ownership, John Henry, this American gets it. And it really kind of made that transition a lot easier. With a new ownership group, if they went out and got Conte back, I think the fans would accept it. Even though they understand that he's a bit volatile, they loved him, right? He was incredible. So that might be an interesting fit, actually. Yeah, good, good point. And when you talk about Manchester United... As much as I do rate Ten Hag, um, I just feel like this is not going to work out. I, I feel like United fans really don't want this man. I, he might be the, man, the right guy for the job, but like you said in your preamble there, that this this club needs a complete overhaul. They need to back him, you know, for a couple of seasons. And I just I just don't know if they have the patience for that. Well, here's the thing. I mean, they're going to spend though as well, right? I mean, they have to change the philosophy, and his philosophy is spend. very different. They too. always spend, right? Yeah, yeah, and I think they will spend. I mean, there's players available, right? I mentioned Declan Rice and Harry Kane, right? If they brought those two guys in for Oof. 250 million, I mean, that's that's a statement, mm. right? Um, but he is, like you said, renowned for coaching young players, and, and that might be the philosophy going forward. But maybe you can buy yourself out of a bit of a mess right now as you implement the long-term philosophy. And who's to say that he can't coach big players, right? We haven't seen it yet. Just because he's known for coaching yeah. young players doesn't mean he can't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I know there, there were talks this morning, I, I read somewhere how his demands are he must have a full say on all transfers in and out, which is really important. If they agree to that, then maybe they get it and he can put his philosophy in there. So, yeah, that's an interesting one. It looks like it's, it's a done deal. He is a good manager, but uh, yeah, will he appease the fan base who might want you know, that, that big sexy name. Yeah. Conte I mean, they've been talking about Pochettino, Pochettino for so long, but one yeah. person that will be happy is Donny Van de Beek. He gets to play under his former manager, maybe actually gets some minutes. He can't play this weekend, actually. I was just looking at that. Something that we hate. He can't play against Manchester United because he's on loan from United. Uh, kind of a big hit for Everton, but I think he's also injured. Back to Frank Lampard. He's actually favored, James. Plus 163 to get sacked. Um, I don't see it happening. The board came out today and said they're sticking with their man with Frank Lampard, probably the wrong decision, probably the wrong decision to bring him in in the first place. Um, I don't know how this ends for Everton, but it's actually getting sad now. At one point, I was like, you know, I kind of want to see him go down because it'd be a big story. But then I watched an uh, an Everton fan TV thing. Guy came on, he had tears in his eyes. And I just, I really feel for those Everton fans, uh, you know, considering what they're going through at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's tough. They're a great fan base. They just love their team. They're loyal um, but they're in a real predicament right now. I even feel so for Frank Lampard. I like Frank Lampard. He's a seems like a really decent guy. Feet yeah, in the it ground. Seems like but... he, he just doesn't know what to do right now. He's I like, know. I well, know what what he, when, when has he ever been in this position before? He was a star player in, in one of the greatest teams we've ever seen for, for you know almost two decades. He hasn't been in this fight before. Now he was asked last week in a press conference, "What are the pressures like now compared to when you were fighting for titles?" And he said, oh, they're just the same. His expectations, you know, whether you're, you're a point back in the title race or you're a point ahead in the dr- – it's not the same. It just isn't. You talk to players <clears throat> who've been in those relegation fights, and they'll tell you it's an awful place to go. Your confidence is at rock bottom. You, you, you hate life. You're angry. You know, you're, you can't escape the pressure. Whereas if you're fighting for first place, I mean, there's pressure. It's, it's a different kind of pressure. Let's not compare it. And he brings in players that have no idea about this pressure. What does Delhi Ali know about this? Well, he what doesn't does, even play. So it doesn't what does Van de Beek know about this? Yeah, I know, right? The worst possible signings. Good oh, long-term, man. but 
you should have brought in some 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 real warriors there as well. And it just seems they're broken because every week it's just mistakes, bad mistakes yeah. costing them, right? Yeah. And, and it goes back to what I said. I just don't think some of these players believe that they were in this position. Now they do. Definitely, they do now. Uh, and you watch. I mean, if you concede three goals to Burnley, okay, you're going away to Burnley and it's a big game. But if you concede three goals to Burnley, you deserve to be relegated because they came into that match thing off four games where they couldn't score. They can't score goals. And it was just Everton mistakes. And I feel like when you get into this position, you're getting dragged down. Mistakes just tend to happen every single game. And it's how you respond, how you bounce back. And they have the attack, I think, in a player like Richarlison to score goals. But again, he's not finishing his chances. It's just all going wrong at the same time for Everton. Yeah, they have some, you know, I mean, they've got some excuses, I suppose. The injuries were awful, but that's just reality in, in the Premier League. Yeah. Um, Calvert Lewin's been missing, you know. I mean, listen, Richarlison is a good player, absolutely, but is he a game changer? He might be at the World Cup, mind you, one of those players that just gets better with the Brazil shirt on. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I, I, I'm with you. I think they're going down. If, if I'm going to bet right now who's going down, it, it's them. They're, they're plummeting because their schedule's awful. Burnley are, you know, have a, you know, just have that confidence about them and they've been down there right Sean Dyche knows how to handle these guys all those guys at Burnley know exactly how to handle this because every yeah. year they they are in it and every year they find a way out and Sean so, Dyche said at halftime to, to his team he goes these guys can't hold a lead they haven't been in this position before go out there and attack them and that's exactly what they did so that, that's a perfect clever. example how there's the experience that? much different than what Frank Lampard can do yeah when I heard Sean Dyche mention that in his press conference saying these guys can't play away from home and he mentioned that he that's what he told us points away that from is home, that is strategy that is his way of getting under Everton even more <laughs> and making them question themselves because they all heard that right and yeah. when they're, they're, they're on the road now I think oh god everyone's the book's out on us everyone knows we suck on the road mm -hmm. I think it's clever by Dice Dice he's really turning the screw on them you know even after he's played them twice this season so I love yeah, it. it's, it's 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 great drama isn't it it's fantastic yeah this run in for Everton is disastrous they have United next Leicester twice, Liverpool, Chelsea. I mean, we keep going through it, but for some reason, call me crazy, James, but I have a feeling they can pull out a result at Goodison Park this weekend. You think so? Well, at home, they're out there a little bit better. Not much. Yeah. A little bit better. But, I mean, there's still some, some significant issues there. We'll see. You know, we'll see how good Frank Lampard is, right? Because this is now is approaching must-win territory for them. Yeah. Right? If, if they could be in the relegation spot by the end of this weekend otherwise. And they've got to turn this around now. If they lose this weekend, then that confidence, that momentum done. is going to just crush them. I, I think they're done. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're done now, just given the schedule. Um, but if there's one flicker of hope, that could be extinguished this weekend with a loss. Yeah, and they get Allen back, which is huge. I think he's one of the most important players. Michael yeah. Keane's going to come back in the mix. I don't know if that's actually a positive, but at least you get a senior center back uh, <laughs> at the back there with Ben Godfrey. Let's move on to attack and defense. Some big games this weekend, James. And I'm probably going to kick myself in the ass for going this route with this first game. But here we are. Aston Villa at home to Spurs. I'm going Spurs, James, plus 130 uh, to win the game. Yeah, I, I'll defend this one. I, I like this. Spurs are, <laughs> they've turned it around. They really have, though, this time, right? One, they really four, have. five. Uh, they, they smashed Newcastle 5 1. 10 goals in the last three games. And we're seeing Conte's preferred system is 3 4 3. It's working really well. There's even some some training videos leaked this week, leaked, and, and the squad look really happy and positive. So I'm sure that was uh, strategic, <laughs> yeah. that, that leak. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, Villa at this point, they lost three straight games, right? They've only won one of six at home. I get the impression it's kind of the dog days for them right now. They're going to be fine. They've had a good season. Um, you know, they're not really fighting for that much. They're, they're really out of the relegation discussion, I think. You know, you never say never, right? But uh, I, I think Spurs are on that momentum. They've got so much to fight for right now. They can see they can see Champions League football again. And Conte knows that, right? He's got this team together, training days on end, as opposed to earlier in the season when he had so many other matches to, to be involved in. So, yeah, I, I'm going to defend that one. I think Spurs, even on the road, are, are going to take care of Villa. Yeah, and they seem to own Villa at Villa Park as well. They won their last six there. And for Aston Villa, they're struggling. And they struggle against the top six. They lost uh, the last nine to all of them. And this number, by the way, this Spurs plus 130 is likely to change. I think it might actually get better because Villa right now are plus 210. I think people will see that Villa at home and they might start hammering that number, which will bring up the Spurs number. So that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, but yes, I'm with you. Spurs uh, to, to win again and, uh, you know, stamp their place in that top four race. Next one, Leicester City, Crystal Palace. I love Crystal Palace right now. One of the most entertaining teams in the Premier League. I can't believe how 
well they beat Arsenal at Selhurst Park uh, last week. I'm going with the over, though, in this one. Over three goals plus 163. I think Palace going forward, they're purring at the moment. They can really score goals, seven goals in the last two games. And Leicester City also scoring as well, but both teams still have some defensive issues. Yeah, I, I'm with you with this. I'll, I'll defend that as well. Um, both on 37 points, both eyeing, you know, top half football for what it's worth. It's a few bucks in their bank accounts, I suppose, but they're loose, loose teams, you know, nothing really to fight for. Leicester, you know, another team that was just crippled through injuries, but are playing so much better these days. They're feeling better about themselves. James Madison is back to his very best. And boy, is he a good player and he's a fun player to watch when he's in top form. And like I said, Palace, they, they were great against Arsenal. They, they were just the, by far the better team. So that's a team that's growing right now. Um, you know, it's funny. I was researching this game and it popped up on my timeline. Ten years ago, they're both fighting in the league championship. Wow. Like again, like, ten years ago, it seems like a long time ago, right? But then you think what's happened in that ten years? Leicester won a championship. You know, <laughs> Palace have gone through the Roy Hodgson era, which was actually pretty successful for them. Two teams that are really, for me, perennial Premier League teams now. And it's amazing how within 10 years, the whole narrative around those teams has changed right now. So I, I, I'm going for goals in this one as well. These guys are feeling pretty good about themselves. That could be a really fun game to watch. Yeah, Leicester, top seven for most goals conceded in the league, which is uh, hard to believe. And they also yeah. played midweek, I should remind you, on Thursday in the Europa Conference League, nil-nil against PSV. So they'll probably have one eye on that. I've seen Brendan Brenda Rodgers... Coming up after a European week, he makes some changes to his Premier League team because they're safe. There's really nothing to play for. Everything, all eggs in the Europa Conference League basket. So that's something to watch out for as well. And I think in those 10 years, James, or Crystal Palace, they made an FA Cup final as well, right? Under Pardew? So I so, say, so yeah, I missed that. Palace, I think in, in the past 10 years, made an FA Cup final, right? Against, I can't remember who it was. Good question. Did I they? think Alan Pardew was their manager. Where he did that dance. There's that gif. Oh, of doing geez, the, dance. the dance. The Pardew yes. dance. Why would you mention that? Oh, I, thought I, I pushed that out of my, my, my consciousness. That's one of the best gifts in Premier League history. Where's, where's Pardew now? Is he coaching? Is he, is oh, he that's around? a great question. I'm going to have to research that. Uh, I bet he's probably coaching somewhere. I, maybe in, I think, I, you know what? It might be in Holland somewhere. Oh, is something he? oh we definitely yeah, look you, may, you could be right there. Actually, he's, he's a pretty good manager, right? I think he gets a bad rap, but it doesn't help when you have a reputation then you start <laughs> dancing like that. In the, you just pitch him as some wedding, can't you? And that's yeah. his move. <laughs> uh, and they ended up losing the game too. But yes, and they have a chance actually to make the FA Cup final. They have Chelsea, I think, in the semi, which, you know what? I think Palace can do some, do some damage there because their season just seems to be going in that direction. That's what they're playing for. And they're getting hot at the right time. Let's move on to the next game. Brentford West Ham, I'm all over. I'm on the Brentford train I until the end of the be. season. Brentford plus 180 to win this game. I thought the odds would be bigger, but I understand it. West Ham coming off uh, a Europa, Europa League match uh, this midweek. So there could be a drop off in performance. Brentford winning games. But, you know, regardless, I just like them at home right now. Ah, uh, I'm going to attack this one. I know Brentford are ah. the, uh, they're the, they're the nice story, and everyone's jumping on that bandwagon. And, and it is a great story, right? They're playing great football smashing Chelsea last week, which is one of those asterisk results, I think. Bit of a fluke, and given how, you know, Chelsea's declining right now, that there's a lot of, uh, you know, I don't know, question marks around that result. I, I know they're a nice story. I get it. Christian Eriksen scoring goals. Ivan Tony's in the cusp of an England call-up. Christian Norgard is world-class, as is Brian Mambueno. You know, I, I get it. But listen, this is West Ham. West Ham are still good. They're a very good team. They've won two or three games. I know they're coming off a draw in the Europa League on Thursday, but they're still very much in that Champions League conversation, just three points back of fourth place. They're a better team. Let's not overthink this one now, but West Ham's a better team, even on the road. Uh, and defensively against Lyon, I thought they were fantastic. So I, I, I like the odds for Brent, if I get that, but West Ham's taking this one. I'm sorry. I, You know what? I would agree with you if it wasn't coming off a Europa League week. Um Three wins, four losses, one draw when they come off a week like that. So there is a drop off in performance. We really saw it, you know, against Spurs. In the first half, they looked decent, but the second half, they looked dead on their feet and Spurs took over. I'm not comparing Brentford to Spurs. I'm just saying. Yeah, you are. You're comparing them. <laughs> I hope that Christian Erickson comes over to Spurs. <laughs> I, I would love that. Uh, yeah, but exactly. their away form, too, has been pretty poor, West Ham. Winless away from home in the league since New Year's Day. So there's problems there. And Brentford already beat West Ham. At the London Stadium, I feel like all signs are pointing towards Brentford, which means it's, West Ham's probably going to win. Is it a pointy end of the season? The pointy end of the season. We're going to find out what West Ham really is, what David Moyes really is. Can they keep in that Champions League conversation? 
Brentford, I, I, listen, they win this weekend. They're safe, right? I yeah. think they're safe anyway. They, they've done a fantastic job, but it's kind of entering that that dog days of the season for them as well. I really think West Ham on the road. And that's why you know Brentford get the odds because West Ham's home form is pretty appalling. But um, take the hammers for the win. You got the hammers. Back to Alan Scott Pardew. He's currently an advisor on football matters to owners of CSKA Sofia. That's, so that's what he's doing. All right. Well, good yeah. for him. He's a smart football man. He is. He is. I think he generally is, but he just has He a, does get a bad rap, eh? He's a bit... You know what? What do they call him in, in football? The term They call him chocolate because he loves himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. That's what the... And, and, but he, so he's confident. Who isn't confident in football, right? Yeah, like you have to be to get to that point, rap. right? What's that? I said you have to be to get to that point. You have to be, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, hey, his last listen, team he's... that he managed, James, was ADO Den Haag, oh, which Den was Hog. in the Den Dutch Hog? League. Oh, Dutch. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, the Dutch League. Uh, dun, dun, dun. I think he was relegated. So, four party. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure he'll be advisor, happy to see the advisor Palace. role, eh? Yeah, the advisor <laughs> role, exactly. Fill in his pockets. But uh, so much Premier League to look forward to. I, I didn't touch on Manchester City, Liverpool. To me, that's a game you just completely stay away from in terms of betting. A lot of the times, and I think you'll agree, when these top teams, meet each other they kind of cancel each other out and it might not be the most entertaining game i hope that's not the case i hope both teams go for it but i also believe that you know for city a draw actually really suits them here oh, yeah i think pep would be pretty happy with that i think liverpool are the team that really need to win this one but there's no way pep goes for a draw at home no right? no way liverpool. Yeah. there's no chance um but i know what you're saying i mean they would take a point quite happily even, even liverpool would take a point there's still lots of football left right, right? so yeah. weird things can happen um, the, these two teams have played so much in recent years and it can be tight, it can be open like you said, avoid it because you don't know what to expect I, I'd say Liverpool might be the slightly more on form team just about, more dynamic certainly Yeah, um, and you know what, in, in terms of what happened this midweek in the Champions League Liverpool 3-1 they're pretty comfortable, they're probably going through the next, next stage yeah. in the Champions League Man City, I think they're walking into hell next week at the Wanda in Spain if Atletico score first in that game, there's going to be bodies on the floor uh, oh, for Manchester City coming out of there. So I really think he's going to have Pet's going to have one eye on that as much as he has one eye on the Premier League, and he kind of have to balance. Well, which one is you know more important? I think Pep is at that stage. Yeah, I think he is, and I think for for Pep and for City, the most important tournament is the Champions League. They haven't won that yet. They've dominated England. They, they they've bossed it. They haven't got that European Cup, and they won it so badly. So uh, I know both teams are pretty healthy. This weekend, um, and they had the depth to do what he wants. He could he could rotate and still have a you know arguably the best eleven in, in world football. So it's going to be. I, I can't see it not being entertaining. I know what you're saying, hundred percent. Often these these types of games are not. But can you imagine City or Liverpool playing anything but an entertaining no. style of football? Yeah, exactly. There's right. no such thing. You know what? I was just looking at City's games, kind of against like the top six or whatnot. They don't really slip up, but for some reason they've slipped up against Spurs a couple times. Uh, I think when they run into a team that can match their intensity, then we really see what Manchester City is all about. And that's well, that's what Liverpool is all about. I mean, it's it's so exciting. And the, the depth for Liverpool, too. They can throw on anybody and still play the exact same way, similar to what Manchester City do. It's it's fascinating. I love the comments this week. Uh, Pepper said, you know, do you overthink things? Did you see that? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He I overthink that. everything. Yeah. Of course I do. <laughs> and he does. You know, that's the truth. He yeah. definitely does, right? That's what makes him who he is. He yeah. was asked today, too, uh, are you the best manager in the in the world? Because that's what Klopp said in this press conference. You know, again, just kind of sticking it a little bit. Of course. And he gets so he gets so uncomfortable saying, "No, I'm not the best coach in the world. No, no, yeah. I'm not. A, I've been very fortunate, great staff, and I'm ter terrible pep impression. I'm sorry, great <laughs> staff, great clubs. And he mentioned I have lots of money to spend, so I give him so much respect for acknowledging that. Uh, and maybe I, listen for me, he's the best. Yeah. But just because the way he transformed the way tactics are in England, certainly. Uh, but it's pretty close to him and Klopp right now. But hey, listen, there could be some guy playing and coaching in like the, the conference league who's a genius. We don't know about. He might be the That's best. That's what coach I always think about. We don't yeah. know. He, she, she might be. Emma Hayes at Chelsea is a fantastic coach. Let's mm -hmm. put her in the mix as well, you know? So yeah. uh, there's, there's this whole, is he the best? Is he, who cares, really? Yeah, who cares? Just enjoy it while they're here. Yeah. Uh, one last thing. Do you think it's a title decider? I'm starting to lean towards no. No, you know, there's so many games left. And when when you're into the final five, yeah. But when there's like 9, 10, 11, in some cases, games left, um, 
I think it's a little bit too soon to say that. I tell you what, if, if City win, yes. If it's a draw or Liverpool win, then no. If that makes sense to you. Because I think no, four I points would be... I can't see City dropping four points given their, their schedule. It's an easier schedule to Liverpool as well, really quite considerably. Is. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, if, if they win it, 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 yeah, if they win it is, if they don't win, be it a draw or a loss, then no, it's still going down to the wire. My message to everybody is just enjoy it because a few months ago, there was no such thing as a title race. And here we are coming to the end of the season. We have a title <laughs> race, top four. Yeah, Rele- Everton might be relegated. Everything is happening at the moment. It's a great time to be a football fan. It is. It's fantastic. It's going to go right down to the wire, wherever it is, whatever end of the table it is. And then the summer starts and then all the fun begins. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, that's it for Fast Money Football. Thank you so much, James. Make sure you follow him at James Sharman on Twitter. You can follow me at TheRealBertV. And please head over to Parlay.tv for more Parlay content. Good luck this weekend.